Come on, let me get a finance guy. Come on, bring me one up. Yeah, I appreciate it, but I can't afford more than 400. That's my max budget, go. Or I can't go a penny higher, so I'm at 400. But I'm gonna shut this down in fucking 30 seconds. I swear to God, I've been at it for a minute. Climbing to the top and this music was my ticket. Found a way to grind, turn a passion to a business, no limit, I'm gonna get it, having millions as a Like, let me give you an example. Who's in finance here, in the finance department? Okay, um, you know, automotive finance. You're in automotive finance? You are you work in the finance department? I work in, I'm in everything. Yeah, but you're, okay, who else is that? Well, we have finance department, so us, yeah. Okay, let me, let me grab a finance guy. Come on, let me get a finance guy. Come on, bring me one up, real quick. I, I, would, I could use you, but I want to use someone in the box right now. Somebody that's in finance. Does that make sense? Yeah, I want to record this one. Oh, it's easy. It's simple. Okay, so what did I use oh, there? Cody. Let's go, big dog. All right. All right, Cody, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Andrew? How you doing? How are you? Not too bad. Okay, are you nervous? Not really. Put your hand out. Like this. Okay, you're good. Come on. Let's come <laughs> on here. All right, so Cody's sitting here, right? Is that cool? Yep. Okay, Cody's sitting here, and he is selling me a brand. What, what do you sell? Uh, I sell cars and power sports, so cows on Okay, and uh, they're all power sports? Cars and, use cars and power sports. Okay, I'm going to put this. It's a used car, yeah. and... It's a 20, I'm just giving an example, model with 20,000 miles. Is that cool? Now, what year is it? 2024. Little miles look good. Car's out of warranty. Does that make sense? Most cars will be out of warranty. I don't care what the name of the car is. Doesn't matter to me. It's irrelevant. Yep. Okay. The monthly payment that I was closed at, yep. I'm going to call it on the front side, which means the used car manager quoted me a payment of $400 a month. Sure. Okay. Yep. You want to sell them a warranty, and it's going to cost $3,000, hypothetically. Yep. Right? Sure. Okay. You got gap on there yep. for, we'll say, $800. So let's just say that's $3,800. Sure. This payment is going to go to $450 a month. Yep. Okay? This is just easy math. Does everybody follow me? And I'm going to say, so Cody's like, yeah, great news, Andy. You know, warranty, gap, you're covered. It's going to be $450. And I'm like, hey, hey Cody, I appreciate it but I can't afford more than 400, that's my max budget, go. Absolutely, I completely understand, Andy. Um, so you're in a warranty on this car. Um, what we can offer you for only $1.43 a day, so less than a coffee a day, I can have protection for the next 10 years, 160,000 kilometers on your vehicle. Not only that, if you crash your vehicle, unfortunately that does happen. Um, you'll have the gap protection on there as well, which is gonna cover any difference between the cost of your car and the cost of the loan. Now we know that with the interest rates going up, the cost of the loan is going to be quite or a lot higher than the car is. So that gap protection is going to cover that cost. I'll get you into a new car that is going to be the same payment, and you're not going to be upside down on. Mm, I just can't afford it. It's a problem. We can't afford it, and like I said, I know that the cost is higher. Um, but as we talked about already, we can't be the cheapest and be the highest service in the uh, in the industry. So you're going to get the uh, higher the high service from you and your family that we're looking for. Yeah, but it's a 2020 with 20,000 miles. It's a great car. I drove it. That's why we we're trading out of our old one. It's a newer vehicle. I mean, I just can't afford more than 450. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Oh, and I absolutely understand that. Now, as we already talked about, this 2020, 20,000 kilometers, or kilometers, sorry, maybe. It's all good. <laughs> 20,000 miles. Um, but again, you're almost out of the warranty that we did talk about. So in the next three months, if your or flu, or, sorry, fuel pump happens to go, you have $2,500 to spend out of pocket um, to fix that so you can crack the heat pump. So if you want to spend the, like I said, $1.43 a day compared to the 400 to the 450 payment, or do you want to spend $2,500 out of your pocket in three months to have to fix that car so you can still get to work and still get your kid to hunt back? Okay. So, number one, listen, by the way, I love it. I want one more finance guy. Come on. Give me one. One more? Come on. Give me the guy. Be because I want another one. Because I'm going to shut this down in fucking 30 seconds. And by the way, I love it. This is why we train, right? Okay. I just like to hear what people have to say. Okay, my man, right Darryl. here, Daryl. All right, Daryl. Here's what I want you to do. So, what? Daryl, speak into that for a second. So, Daryl, hey, I, Ooh, a lot of eyes. Hey, no, no, this isn't a lot of eyes. You're actually good. Bye. Okay, but here's what I want you to do. Hey, number one, I really appreciate you, Daryl. You're a great guy. But 
I can't afford 450. I told the salesperson up front, 300 is all I could do. They got me to 400. I can't go a penny higher, so I'm at 400. I'm gonna be honest, man. If you can't afford 50 bucks, you can't afford the 3,000 dollars to get the full, full time fix. So if I was you, if I was in your shoes, it's easy for me to pay 50 dollars more per month than paying 3,000 dollars at the time that it happened. Yeah, but it's got 20,000 miles on it, and your, your sales guy told me it was really nice. Absolutely, and we also have a service department that do $2.5 million a month just on brand new cars. Like, I won't be back there, and I guarantee you there's more new cars back there than it is old cars. Okay, okay, but hold on, guys. Listen to me, everybody. All right, so what did I tell you guys I would teach you today? How to be a, a master communicator. Am I right? Yeah. Now, now, listen, I want you to understand. You're a master communicator is something that makes it easy to say yes to. That, that means whatever I say, it's easy for you to say, yeah, okay makes it hard to say no to. That means when I tell you what I want you to do, it's impossible for you to say no to me. And then I make it your idea. We're missing the make it your idea part. Does that make sense? As a finance person, it's your job to set up the sale and make it the client's idea, okay? So number one, uh, Daryl, thank you so much for coming back here today. Number one, the salesman told me you're one of the nicest customers he's had all year. So that's amazing. I can't wait to help you guys out. We're gonna sign a little bit of paperwork. Now, before we do that, there's something called risk transfer, okay? And that's the department I handle. And this is basically the opportunity at this point in time where we can transfer the risk if anything breaks um, to the warranty company. So if something breaks, they'll pay for it. Does that make sense? Cool. Now, how many working pieces do you think there's on a machine on the car? You're buying a 2020 model. How many working pieces do you think that they're on that car? 5,000, thousands? Five. 30,000 working pieces on a machine, 30,000. They make these cars pretty in depth now. Now the biggest thing is if something goes out on this car, these 30,000s, it's not a matter of if something's gonna break, which I'm sure you're looking at the number, it's when. The question is when it breaks, who is gonna pay for it? So I wanna give you some information and this will be the time that we decide who handles the risk, you or the warranty company. Is that fair? You feel me framing him? No. Have, I, have I asked him to buy anything? No. I just told him we're gonna make a decision who's gonna handle the risk. Okay, it's just risk transfer, that's all we're doing. And you're about to be transferring it right over the warranty company because you're gonna be signing my papers. Okay, but I'm gonna say this. Where do you think car dealerships make most of their money, Daryl? In the service department or the sales department? Most of our customers learn, they think it's in the sales department. It's not, it's in the service department. And how I know that is because the average per hour labor to put your car in the service department is $200 per hour. That's labor, it's not including a part. The average car goes into the service department for five hours, which means it would be $1,000 in labor. The average part is anywhere between $500 to $600. Let's say it's $500 plus $200 for a diagnostic. Just to have your car in the shop for one time is $1,700. Now, I'm not the best at math, but if I was to take $1,700, if it happened one time in a year, divided by that by 12 months in a year, that's about $120 a month in a small maintenance payment that you'd have to add. Does that make sense? For $450 for only $50 difference, I can actually put a full warranty on this vehicle where the risk transfer will take these 30,000 working pieces on the machine and will transfer that over to the warranty company. So if something happens, when you come in, you don't have to worry about this and you don't have to worry about this and they'll take care of it. By the way, this is a small part, not a big one. I'm sure you can imagine what big parts cost. Does that make sense? So my question is, if we got an opportunity right now to transfer the risk, and we know that it's not a matter of if something's gonna break, but when, the question is when it breaks, who wants to pay for it? Would you like to transfer all the risk over to the warranty company at this point? So if something breaks, you can walk in, hold the keys in the air, we'll take care of the car, give you something to drive and fix it. Or do you wanna handle that, and if something happens, you just go back here and figure it out? Would you like me to handle it? Okay, you guys get that? It's risk transfer. Remember this. Risk transfer. Transfer the risk. You notice I never push them hard. I never even let them feel me selling them. This is a secret. You'll never feel me sell you. The most dangerous salespeople never apply pressure. Their goal is actually to pull all the pressure out of the deal. And that's all I did with him. By the way, did I communicate that pretty clearly? Pretty well. I got 20 more rounds I can go with him. But my goal is, is that I just wanna, I wanna pretend like, like my job is not to sell anything. It's just to decide that it's not a matter of if something's gonna break, it's when. Question is, when it breaks, who's gonna pay for it? So all I wanna do back here is have you sign one of two forms. Can everybody say that? Sign one of two forms. 
the form in which if something breaks, it says right here that you decline to transfer the risk so that you'll pay for it all on your own. You can sign that form. Or you can sign the form that says you're transferring the risk over to the warranty company and in the event that it happens, they'll pay for it and you're completely protected. We're gonna sign one or two forms. Which one, which one would you like to sign? And if you can do that, they'll choose this form because they made it their idea. Now, what were some key things I said? Where do you think, where do you think most car dealerships make their money? In the sales department or, or the service? Service. And then I went in, how many working pieces do you think there are on a machine? 30,000 working pieces on a machine, that's a lot. It's a lot, but she thought it was less. It's not. By the way, do you know one of the things that I also could go into? What if he said, Andy, I appreciate it, but I just can't afford it. I totally understand. I get that. Let me say one more thing, and then we'll, we'll move on, and I'll print your papers for you. I gave you an example over here of this $500 for a part. How old are you? 35. You're 35, so you've been driving for 20 years. When you were 18 years old, do you remember when you and your dad or you picked out a car? What was the first thing you guys wanted to look at to make sure it was good? The engine. Because the engine could cost five to six thousand dollars if it went out. Am I correct? So what did we want to make sure? The engine was good, the transmission was good. It's 2024. We don't worry about the engines. These engines run a half a million miles. It's the computer. The computer is what's scary. See, these newer cars, they have computers, and when the computers go out, the cars don't run. So if an engine was five to six grand, what do you think a computer costs? Sometimes more than the amount of the car. So my question is, before we sign this, no matter what vehicle you'd go to purchase, this warranty, the reason why it's the best and it's my favorite, and I made sure it would be one that I would take care of my family with, and I see you have a family, so you want the same. It also covers the computer, and if you'll notice right here, X, Y, and Z, it shows it covers the computer. This right here, this 450, it's not a matter of if something's gonna break, but when, when it breaks, the warranty's gonna be transferred over in the event any of this happens to be paid for, even if it's a computer, which is priceless. My husband's a mechanic, I got a buddy that owns a service shop, none of that matters. When the computer goes out, you have to buy it from the OEM, from the manufacturer, you have to buy it from them, and it's crazy. We can take care of all of that right now, well, that'll never be a concern to you, and you'll never have to worry about the engine, the transmission, the small parts, or the computer. Now, how do you feel? Would you like to transfer the risk over? Do you see what I'm saying? There's new levels, okay? See? By the way, am I, am I, did I get frustrated? Did I be like, come on, man. You know, I see finance people whenever, see, the problem is the art of sales is dead. The art of sales has died. People don't know how to sell anymore. Most of them don't even know how to talk. We know how to get mad. We know how to tell people what to do. We know how to complain, but we don't know how to communicate. And so that's why I want to tell everybody in this room, if you're listening to what I'm saying, maybe risk transfer is a word you can use in your industry. You know, maybe, is, is this all money justification? Can you guys figure out how to justify the money in, in your business? That's it. I used money justification on him. I used it here. Hey, by the way, good job, guys. Hey, guys, give it up for them. Let's keep going. Yeah. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.